Midlands politicians are on a recess from the Dáil at the moment until mid-September. Uh, this year's TDs will have a shorter than normal absence from Leinster House. Our reporter Owen O'Rourke went out and about across the Midlands to find out if people think that our elected representatives should have an eight-week break. I think they're a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. That's what I think. should be ashamed of themselves. Uh, I'd like to see any other industry that has those kind of holidays, apart from, I suppose, teachers. Uh, they're very unique in their benefits, I have to say. Well, if the work's not being done, I'm assuming that there has to be a knock-on effect to the bailout of the country. That being said, what work can be done if they're not in there to do it? Well, I don't believe the government should be shut down for two months anyway. I mean, if they're not present, they can't be there to do the job we've employed them to do. Uh, also, at this moment of crisis for our country, I don't think anybody should be thinking about taking excessive holidays. Everybody's entitled to a holiday, but uh, two months is an excess as far as I'm concerned. But the government is in recess from this week up until the 14th of September. Do you think that would suffice for the country not being governed while they're being on holidays? It's a bit of a joke, isn't it? The country really needs them to be in the office doing their, their job and they're, they're gone now for two months to, you know, they're, they're so into the, the crisis in the country and people are doing well to take a week off and these guys can take two months and the money they're on you know it just seems a bit kind of ridiculous that they can get away with taking holidays like that when everyone else is struggling so much I suppose they should be there more than one day though over the summer you know uh, Greece economy should, we, could, we could be next in line for what Greece is going through so I think the Irish people should react like the Greek public and kind of get up in arms and try and fight it a bit you know uh, Marcella Corcoran Kennedy Fine Gael, uh, TD for Lee Shoffley joins us in studio uh, you missed the very beginning of that um, but the, the lady at the start said it was a disgrace uh, the TDs are uh, off for two months uh, why does the doll close for two months every year well first of all I wish I was on holidays for eight weeks because <laughs> I don't think into the foreseeable future that's a possibility for me at all um, it's a bit of a misnomer actually the um, Dáil doesn't convene which means that the TDs uh, won't be raising issues in the Dáil um, or debating issues in the Dáil but it doesn't mean that we won't be working but, but why doesn't the Dáil convene for two months well I'm only a new deputy actually so this is my first experience of it right. and I know that under the programme for government we gave a commitment that we would meet 50% more than we had than the Dáil had been previously and we were actually um, sticking to that. The reforms that have been brought in this week in particular will um, ensure that there are less holidays in fact there were less holidays taken at Easter uh, there are less uh, weeks this uh, break for the summer, there will be less at Halloween and Christmas and uh, by the end of the year we will certainly be back up um, at you know 50%, uh, sitting 50% more. Um, a certain, certainly a certain amount of work is done when the doll is in session without a shadow of a doubt because you obviously have to put through legislation but a serious amount of legislation has already been put through and there's a lot more needs to be worked on. Uh, now for example while the doll went into recess yesterday I'm working again today and I'll be working uh, for the foreseeable in the month of August um, I'll probably get a week somewhere but and into September as well so from that point of view I will still be working, I'll be in the constituency I'll be attending meetings um, for example I'm on the Oireachtas Environment Committee now and I'll be up there next Tuesday we're meeting again so right. there is ongoing work all the time. I suppose it's, it's really it's the perception more than anything else sure. There has been the perception that because when the doll is not sitting, okay. uh, you're not actually doing anything, whereas we actually are working. Okay, and in fairness, yeah, in fairness to a comment that was made in the Vox Pop, uh, the country is still being governed. It's just that the doll is not convening, so the government continues on regardless of oh, whether, indeed. And whether the ministers you are, are still visible, working. Mm-hmm, whether mm-hmm. you are visible or not. Um, now, this is your first term, as you said, in, in the doll. Um, are you able, and you were a councillor before this, so you're well used to working long, strange, unusual hours in, in the service of the public, if you like. Um, have you been able, or can you put a figure on the hours, the weekly hours you would have worked um, since you became a member of the doll? Well, the hours in Leinster House, we are there Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, so um, I would usually be up there on Tuesday morning even though the doll doesn't sit until 2.30 but it sits 2.30 until 8.30 and it might run back, run on until 9. Uh, on the Wednesday then it's from half 10 until half past 8, but again you'd be in early in the morning, you know, 9 or whatever um, and then Thursday it sits from um, half past 10 until somewhere around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, so the hours uh, in the doll are long but then you also have to look at the hours that you're doing in your constituency as well sure. and there will always be events at the weekends as well, Saturdays and Sundays depending on what way things are um, so you really need to um, take a look, it's, it's hard to really put a, a, defi- 
I never even th- thought about the hours because I seem to be working all the time at the moment. Uh, but I'd say you could be working 80 hours a week to 100 hours, depending yes. on, on the week that's in it, you know. Okay. Okay. Now, um, as well as your, your activities, um, uh, your, your ordinary normal activities, if you like, as a representative of um, constituency, Lee Shoffley, uh, you're also a member of the Environment Committee. I, I, I know I don't have the title of that committee uh, correct. It's the, it's the Joint Oireachtas Committee. Um, now, we have three departments. We have Environment, Transport and uh, Culture. Okay. Now, the reason I bring that up is because we were talking this week about the proposed new reservoir for Gary Hinch. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were speaking to Borden Mona and we were speaking to people opposed um, to that particular uh, project as well. You were part of the committee who made the trip to Gary Hinch today to have uh, this week to have a look at the site. Um, what did you find there? What, what impressed you about the suitability of that site for this project? Well, I was delighted to be part of the trip there, particularly since it was uh, one of the first um, field trips that we did from the committee and it was to Offaly. I was absolutely delighted with that and I had already talked a lot to the other members informally about the work that Borden One had already done um, in the area, such as out at Loch Bora and at Finnemore's Lakes. And so for me, it was in a way... You know, I was delighted to see the site and delighted to hear more about Board and Mona plans and they showed us additional information on the day. Uh, but it was, I was convinced, to be honest with you, about their capacity to deliver it already based on what I'd seen and experienced uh, in the past. Uh, but it was wonderful for people from the committee who were in the cities. Um, particularly in Dublin City now they, you know they wouldn't ever venture too far from the Pale um, but for them to see how the uh, Borden Mona had managed Loch Bora had transformed it into an amenity area in an eco park uh, both taking into um, account the environment and walking and cycling but also the arts development there um, they were absolutely fascinated by it and a lot of them had never seen it before and were just amazed that this was a stone's throw from Dublin and yet it was such a fabulous facility but to see the site of Gary Hinch and to see the expanse of it uh, with hardly a house in sight across that you know 1500 acres of bog was just extraordinary and showed the capacity of it to hold the amount of water that it would be holding there. Now, th- there is a, con- a contention in this whole issue, and that's to do with those opposed on various environmental grounds to what's um, what's planned for this area. Um, what's your understanding of the environmental concerns? Well, I can totally agree with the, with the, the, the concerns that people would have in terms of their wanting to bring it to the table and having them alleviate it, really. Because at the end of the day, um, for example, I know that they were, cons- they were looking at Loch Ree to start with, and then they were looking at Loch Darg. And I think from a scientific and engineering basis, uh, certainly what I've been told, that Loch Darg is the, the one that has the greatest capacity and is the best source um, to pipe to Dublin and the greater Dublin region. But... Um, from the point of view of ecology and amenity and, uh, you know, tourism, I know people that are into angling and boating were all very concerned about all of that. Uh, but what we have been told, um, and certainly, you know, I obviously would like to get more information on it, is that the percentage of water at uh, highest uh, levels is only 2% that they're taking off. Mm. Um, and so it, w- it shouldn't have any negative impact. Now, you see, I know, and I can completely see where people are coming from in terms of being suspicious about this because of the level of flooding that has been experienced in the Shannon Basin over, you know, decades. And I've seen that myself at first hand. And I know there are probably concerns around, well, gosh, if we have another crowd in trying to get involved in the management of this water, it's it's just not good. So, um, but on, in, on balance, mm. I feel that we live on an island, a small population. Uh, there is a finite number of resources. And if some of the people, our people on the island need our water, uh, then we should share our water. Because that is, is, and I say our I mean, it's not just belonging to anybody in any area. Mm. It's our water. Um, And that if they need it pumped to their area... um, Because there's other uh, elements to this, um, which I suppose my mind was opened on as well, is that if you have this um, volume of water uh, traversing the countryside, there's 125 kilometres um, of pipeline going to be put in. And that's the plan anyway. Uh, now, again, remember, this is a proposal, but this is uh, what the plan would be if Borden Mona do get the, 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 the uh, contract to do it. Um, you're looking at 125 mi- miles of pipeline. That water then can be tapped off at any point all the way up along so that if you have uh, counties through which it's moving, it means that those counties have access to water that they would never have had before. And that could be a real attractor for foreign direct investment to bring industry into the country that would need volumes of water because water is a massive resource. And I suppose we see so much of it, we take it for granted. But there are other countries that 
you know, don't have water at all. Um, and so they couldn't even, con- uh, you know, countenance attracting in that kind of industry. So I would be very, very hopeful that it would be a very positive um, experience for uh, people. You mentioned Borden and Mona there. Are they the only people who are in the running to, to uh, present this project or are there other people? Are you open? Are you willing? Are you um, obliged to deal with other uh, uh, interested oh, of parties? of course. Yes, yeah, certainly. Borden and Mona, what they were doing the other day, they came into the Environment Rockies Committee to give us a presentation on all of their business. Mm. This being one element of it, but because it's something that they're um, uh, ver- they've done a huge amount of research on and work on, naturally they would uh, do a lot of research and development. They wanted to present their ideas to the committee, and that's all just part of informing. Is there certainly will be other players? I would imagine Board Gosh are interested as well, right. and there could be other ones out there that I'm even unaware of at this stage. Okay, um, we'll move on, uh, Marcella, because I know you're, you're you're stuck for time, so we don't want to uh, delay you too much. But I just want to ask you um, finally. Um, what do you think is the most pressing issue facing your constituents at the moment? Well, there are a lot of issues uh, facing the constituents and they're the same issues that are replicated across the country, I believe. Um, And I think employment is the key. Uh, And I also think that... uh, money in the pocket is the problem that the lack of <laughs> is is the problem for most of the people across the country and I think people who are working mm. in the um, public sector who are you know uh, have been levied heavily uh, maybe have big mortgages they are certainly feeling the pain uh, there are other people then who uh, have been um, employed who have very highly skilled and they really are frustrated because they want to do something with it um, and I think they're the main they're the main issues that are coming to me at the moment. Uh, there are obviously other issues as well. Sure. There are education issues and various other issues, but th- they are the pressing ones. And but I think the bailout r- news from yesterday <coughs> excuse me, is terrific. It means that the budget will now not be as tough uh, we we'll certainly hope it won't be as tough as uh, intended. <coughs> excuse me. Okay. Uh, no, we, we, we are due to, to benefit uh, by somewhere between 600 and 800 million euro mm-hmm. a year, I think, as a result of the reduction in the interest rate. Um, how would you like to see some of that money spent? Well, uh, if I was in control of that money, which I won't be, but I might have an input into saying how it would be because uh, we are all wor- working on various committees and uh, we can make recommendations. Uh, just from my own perspective, I would love to see the... Um, more money in uh, encouraging small and medium enterprises uh, in manufacturing. Uh, I know we have um, introduced a lot of um, schemes in terms of training um, and trying to get people back into the workplace but I think the existing small businesses need support. Uh, They need cash flow Um, and also um, just on foot of the super Quinn um, whatever is going on there I don't know at the moment because it's shopping and changing over the last couple of days but the suppliers there I mean there are small businesses that are in this constituency and in every constituency around the country something has to be done to ensure that they get paid and so I would love to see that happening uh, back down to a local level I suppose mm. I would love to see um, the rural transport programme uh, funding being maintained so that uh, we can continue to deliver the services that uh, we, we need across into the, the area and um, give people access to services. W- what about some of the bigger issues such as um, perhaps removing the ban on the moratorium on recruitment in the health service or something like that? Could that yeah. money go towards mm. that, do you think? Well, again, now I wouldn't have the expertise oh. to, to be honest, there's no point in misleading people. I wouldn't have the expertise to, to and I mean, this is only news from yesterday, so yeah. we haven't even been briefed on what the potential is as yet. Uh, but most definitely, I mean, there are there are terrible log jams. I mean, we only hear about, uh, say, Burr Daycare Centre, um, Ophalia House, where uh, services are being curtailed because they can't recruit and it is causing problems for people. So certainly that would be something I would love to see as well. Okay. Uh, Marcella, we leave it there for the moment moment. Uh, thank you very much for coming in to, uh, today and t- telling us about plans for the summer, explaining the, the procedures in the doll a little bit in terms of opening hours and uh, just filling us in a little bit on the uh, Gary Hinge project as well and your, your opinions on that one. Uh, that's Marcella Corcoran-Kennedy there, Finnegal TD for Lee Shoffley.